Good evening. This is Bell Geode, and we are back with some more Aerofly FS2. And tonight, we're back with Miss Pamela in the Cessna 172. We are currently in the Florida Keys, one of my favorite airports, Marathon Airport. And the reason why we're here tonight is because I want to show off a little project done by the moderator of the IPAX Forum, otherwise known as... Dr. Hot Wing 1. This is, I guess you would say, his uh, Christmas gift to the community, basically to show us just how easy it is to create scenery. So I'm going to go into all the details in a second. Miss Pam, are you ready to go? I think we need to get the aircraft started up here, so don't mind me. All right, let's get our battery and alternator on. There we go. We got lights. We'll get our avionics up and running. And I'm going to need to get the lights on, the exterior lights. Um, yeah, nav and beacon should be on. So we'll go ahead and push our mixture in. And then we'll get the fuel pump on and turn our magnetos on. There we go. Okay, great start. All righty, Pam, we did good so far. Okay, I'm going to get the rest of these lights on here. So I want my taxi light. I think I got it. Uh, yeah. That's the only bad thing about being in the passenger seat here. I wish Pam could actually uh, turn on the controls, but she can't. All right, we'll get our flaps down. That's one notch. Looks good to me. And if you take a look at our little moving map display, it's not a true GPS. This is where we are. We're in the Florida Keys on Marathon Key, so about halfway down the Florida Keys. We're going to be heading further to the west ultimately landing in Key West. There are only two airports that are provided with this free scenery so far. However, we expect that to change as Dr. Hotwing One has more spare time to actually work on this. Okay, one thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna set our heading bug to runway heading, which I believe is 070, so we're gonna be heading out that way. Um, I don't see any traffic on a tarmac, so we're going to head out. Okay, Miss Pam, we'll turn the brakes off. And if you could, please, taxi us out to runway 7. So along the way, I'll be explaining to you just how Dr. Hot Wing One was able to come up with this little Florida Keys scenery. But before I get into all of that, I do need to make you aware that this scenery is not something that you're going to find on Steam. In order to get this free scenery, you have to be registered on the IPAX forums. There is an actual downloads area where this scenery package is located and you're going to be going there to get it so you have to be registered If you're new to my channel, then you're in for a rare treat, as I'm going to be giving you a little bit of a virtual tour of the lower Florida Keys. Of course, longtime viewers of my channel are probably already familiar with this, since I've done one of these types of tours in just about every flight sim that has the Florida Keys as a place that you can fly to. So, I'll be explaining some of the little areas as we get a little bit further west towards Key West, and, um, for those of you who've already heard it before, you'll just have to forgive me. All right, but one thing I will say, I do like the way that uh, Dr. Hot Wing One put this airport together, and it's pretty much exactly the way that I remember the last time that I was there, which, mind you, was quite a few years ago now. All right, here we are. Okay, so we're at the threshold of runway 7, so Pam, if you don't mind, I need to change our lighting setup here. So we're going to turn off our beacon, we'll turn on our strobe. Okay, landing light, we need you on. 
Alright, I think I got it there. Yep, taxi light is off. And of course, pedo heat, we're going to need to turn you on as well. Alright, I don't see any traffic to that side. And I don't see any traffic coming in. I really don't know why I keep checking, folks. It's just a force of habit. But I would say we are pretty much set to go, so let's take the active. And just as a reminder, there is no ATC to speak of in here. Not yet, anyway, but it's one of the things that's on their uh, whiteboard to get done. So at some point in time, as soon as they decide how best they want to implement uh, ATC. All right, Miss Pam, let's go. No breaks down throttles up today. We're just going to take off. All right, and we are rotating. Very nice. Okay, so since we're at sea level, we should probably bring it up to about 2,000 feet. I'm going to continue on this heading. Luckily, I already set my heading bug, so um, we can simply engage the autopilot when we're getting a little closer to 2,000 feet. But right there, folks, that is Marathon Airport with all the little aircraft and buildings that Dr. Hot Wing One put on the scenery. And, of course, you can see the island itself. Now, obviously, not all the buildings are realized here. However, for what I can see, he did a pretty good job placing some of the more important buildings on the island. Matter of fact, let's take a quick look from outside. As you can see, and something that's going to be a recurring theme throughout this uh, little virtual tour here, because the waters of the Florida Keys are rather shallow, however, the um, orthophoto that's used to create them only goes out so far, compromises needed to be made. So when Dr. Hot Wing One combined everything together, he had to kind of trim off the edges so that, you know, it would actually fit in the right spot and still take into consideration the various shoals and whatnot around the islands of the Florida Keys. However, it also shows us something that um, is an area of opportunity, I guess you would say, for Aerofly FS2. And that is the fact that there is no real water. And by real water, of course, I mean, you know, virtual 3D water, like what you would find in X-Plane and so on. Hang on a second. Let me turn on our autopilot. I believe we're going up to about 2,000, any higher than that, and this thing will not be VFR anymore. All right, let's set our vertical speed. It's at 400 feet per minute. We're almost there right now anyway, so I might as well just click on the altitude hold. And we're currently on roll hold, so let me go ahead and click on our heading hold. Make sure we're pointing in the right direction here. All right, I'm gonna go pretty much due south so that we can make this turn here. Okay, there we go. So yeah, as I started to say, because of the fact that there's no um, modeled water like there is in X-Plane or FSX or even DCS, which is really starting to blow me away with how good their water is, you end up in a situation like this where there's a bit of a compromise between the orthographic photos that we're looking at and the default water, which is basically just a painted on version of an orthophoto that is not very definitive. So it does look a little bit jarring, especially the higher up that you get. And I'm thinking that uh, over time, some of the improvements that can be made to this would be to add a little bit of blending, similar to the way that you would do if you were in X-Plane and using Ortho for XP. However, remember, this is still, for the most part, a pretty brand new sim. So the technology is there, but it still has a lot of room to develop. And the idea behind this scenery 
was basically to get it out there that anybody can create scenery for Aerofly FS2. You don't have to have the powerhouse of Orbix to be able to pull off something that looks good and feels good. And that's probably one of the most beautiful things about Aerofly 2 and about when any simulator tries to replicate real life like this. It adds to the immersion. Like, remember, I'm inside the Oculus Rift right now, which really is the only way to fly Aerofly FS2. So in spite of what I'm seeing where the water edge uh, meets the default water, quote unquote, there's still a lot of realism to this entire package and we're going to make our way over past the seven mile bridge and the far end of marathon right now and i'm going to show you what i mean as we get over the water that is included Okay, so up ahead you can see the far side of Marathon Key and the beginnings of the Seven Mile Bridge. Now if that bridge looks vaguely familiar to you, well, it's been in a few movies, shall we say, not the least of which was True Lies and even the James Bond movie License to Kill. So yeah, that bridge has seen its fair share of Hollywood action, shall we say. But you can see some of the uh, suburbs on the southern side of the island there. And we're actually closing in on one of my absolute favorite restaurants in the world. And that will be coming up just before those uh, two bridges split off there. So I'll, I'll show you when we get a little bit closer there. But yeah, you're starting to see as the scenery opens up, which you can verify on the map there, everything starts getting more real. So you saw a quick look of my absolute favorite restaurant, the Sunset Grill. I highly recommend if you're ever visiting the Florida Keys and you stop by Marathon, please make sure you stop by that restaurant. It's up to you if you want to tell them Bell Geo sent you. They'll probably look at you funny because they certainly don't remember me as that, I'm sure. Alright, but yes, this is the way that the water looks as part of this scenery so if you ignore all the little edge parts there this is pretty much exactly what it looks like if you're in a Florida Keys now you're probably wondering how did he get it to look like this well I've got the answers for that coming up after this quick little break where we're gonna go outside and check out the seven mile bridge All right, now I may need to make some minor course adjustments here because as you can see, we're coming up on the little line there. So I'm going to want to make sure I follow that exactly on course. Okay, so you're probably wondering, like I said, how he was able to pull this off. Well, see, that's the whole point of him coming up with this package for you here. 
everything that he used to get this done and into Airfly FS2 involved the free SDK kit that you can download from the IPAX website. SDK, of course, stands for Software Development Kit. So basically, it's the exact same things that the developers are using to create the fabulous sceneries that you've seen so far in all of these videos that I've been doing. In particular, what you get with this free package when you download it is something called GeoConvert, which allows you to take uh, USGS or other sourced uh, orthophoto images or aerial images to convert them into a format that Airfly FS2 can read. And in addition to which, some of the other things that come with the SDK include an aircraft converter, a general content converter, 3D modeling plugins for programs like 3DS Max, which I'll talk about in a second, as well as Microsoft Visual Studio C++. Okay, we are approaching No Name Key. I kid you not, that is exactly what this key is called, is No Name Key. And it's easily identifiable because it's got those distinctive square reservoirs there for all the water, the fresh water, and so on and so forth. And of course we've got uh, some of the other keys, such as Big Pine, Middle Torch, uh, Big Torch. Knock em down key, ramrod key, Kujo key, it's all there. And you'll notice as we get closer and closer to Key West, he actually put more and more buildings. Now this is a labor of love. It took him five months to do this. So essentially, from my understanding how this would all work, the first thing that you would want to do once you get the um, SDK is, of course, find an orthophoto source. In this case, you might want to go with um, the USGS for areas in the United States, since that's simply the best orthophoto that you're going to find at the highest possible quality. Then you would, of course, convert that over to a format where Airfly FS2 can use. Now, as far as all these houses and various other 3D structures, um, what he did for the more custom stuff is use 3DS Max, which is a payware 3D modeling software. However, the SDK will also allow you to use other things such as Cinema 4D or AC3D. I have heard rumors that they're going to make Blender also usable. Blender, of course, is free and open source, so if you have experience with Blender, it's only a matter of time before you'll be able to use it. Excuse me there, Miss Pam. Just wanted to check out the keys here. Wow, so beautiful. Now, from my understanding, that autogen down there is actually a part of the default autogen that comes with uh, Airfly FS2. So, of course, you can insert that. And you can also use the cultivation techniques that IPAX is working on to add things like trees and so on and so forth. So what I'm trying to say here is it doesn't have to be just a flat sheet with, you know, a couple of random houses placed there. You could actually flesh this thing out. And remember, he did all of this in his spare time, so he really didn't have the opportunity to put every single tree in every single house. But what he's done so far is pretty good.
So some of the areas that we just passed uh, just now include Summerland Key, where there is actually a little airport. There's another little airport a little bit closer to um, Key West that we're going to be passing by. Now, none of these airports have been modeled. However, because of the fact that this thing is freely available, anybody with any experience at all with the 3D modeling programs and the various uh, portions of the SDK that are included, can go in and add to this. Now, I have heard from Dr. Hot Wing One himself that he does plan on making updates for it. But let's face it, the man's busy. He's got a life, plus he's got a forum to moderate. So we can't really expect him to, you know, devote a whole heck of a lot of time to this. So I'm sure he would probably be okay if somebody came up with the rest of airports that he hasn't had time to do and, you know, combined with him to add everything together. And honestly, folks, I think that is going to be one of the biggest selling points for Airfly FS2 that's very similar to the X-Plane and the FSX P3D community. The fact that you can actually have the community help to build the sim, I, that I think speaks volumes. And I'm glad that uh, IPAX went in this particular direction as far as uh, getting the community and everyone involved. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love when the developers themselves make scenery because you know it's going to be a vast area and let's face it folks, that's what they do for a living so you know, you kind of expect that. But just the fact that we can go in there and do that as well. I've thought about um, doing like maybe Jamaica and places like that. Still haven't quite found the time to do it, but I'm really inspired by seeing what Dr. Hot Wing One has pulled off here with one of my absolute favorite areas of the world. So, kudos to him on that. All right, now up ahead, you're going to see one of the airports that's not currently modeled. This is Sugarloaf Shores Airport. Now, it's significant for two reasons. Number one, it's home of uh, the skydive company so if you ever plan on doing any kind of skydiving you're gonna want to come down here to this particular airport which is skydive key west that's the building that you're looking for the other important thing that's here is the sugarloaf bat tower and i think i told that story and explained but just to give you like the reader's digest version way back in like the 20s or the 30s i forget exactly which decade they built this tower to house a whole bunch of bats that uh, this guy imported into the Keys to handle the mosquito problem that's so prevalent in South Florida. The idea seemed good enough on paper, but what ended up happening was as soon as they opened up the bat tower for business, every single one of the bats flew away, never to be seen again. So the bats were all gone. The mosquitoes, however, just kept multiplying. That's the Florida Keys in a nutshell right there. We're coming up on an area known as the Saddle Bunch Keys, and just beyond that little uh, archipelago, if you will, is Key West Naval Air Station, or Boca Chica Key. Now, I should caution you, Key West Naval Air Station is not currently modeled in Dr. Hot Wing One's scenery. He has said that he does have plans on putting that all together, and then of course adding it to the scenery, but right now, the only thing that we can see there is just the ortho photo, and I think he may have placed a few buildings and possibly a few surprise F-18 Hornets. We'll see if we can locate them in a moment as soon as we fly over the Naval Air Station.
I think this is one of those classic cases where the ortho photo looks a little too good. I can't actually tell if what we're seeing down there are squadrons of F-18s on a tarmac, which is exactly what would be there in real life, or not. Man, I'm gonna have to wait until after I'm finished recording and come back for a lower pass because I could not tell whether or not those were actual Airfly FS2 models or if it was part of the ortho photo. <laughs> it's that good. Wow. Alright, but this big island that we're looking at here, this is our final destination for the evening. This is Key West. Now we're going to be landing facing the opposite way, which of course means that we are currently going to be setting up on our downwind leg. And I'm taking liberty of bringing us down to about 1500 feet, which I believe, if I remember correctly, is the approach uh, pattern altitude, so to speak, to come into this airport. But obviously, that's going to change momentarily. So, Miss Pam, pull the throttles back if you could, please, and let's begin our downwind leg. Now, this is the part that I was really looking forward to because it looks like Dr. Hot Ring 1 went hog wild on Key West, which is really really impressive because I mean for an island that's only about what four miles long by one mile wide there's surprisingly a lot of stuff chucked in to this tiny area I mean we've got all kinds of neighborhoods and of course bars restaurants hotels hospitals and you know all different types of businesses and historical areas and tourist traps and whatnot he did a lot of work in this area. So this ultimately, I believe, is most likely what took the better part of the five months for him to come up with this thing. And there's even that little island there where there's nothing but trees, which you can see from Mallory Square every evening when you go out with everyone else to go watch the sunset. So it is so awesome that he remembered to flesh out that little island as well. So cool. I could tell you so many times I've been to the Keys, it's, it's definitely one of my favorite places and this is why, it just has its own vibe to it. And even though this is not an official Aerofly FS2 product, I would have to say that he's completely captured that laid back vibe that's very prevalent in Key West. Granted, it's not perfect, and I'm sure you can see some of the shortcomings that uh, the scenery has, but remember, we're talking about something that's not designed by a developer. You're talking about something that was designed by the forum moderator. So, his point being, any amateur scenery developer can hop in here and do this. And honestly, if this is what he can pull off, I can only imagine what'll happen when the rest of the community gets involved as well. All right, so we're passing over the cruise ships now and we are about to set up for our final. I have our autopilot off and uh, I'm basically hand flying it here. Or more to the point, Pam is hand flying it because I'm still playing tourist right now. I'm trying to see if I can recognize any of the bars down there on Duval Street. I swear, that's like my second home, folks. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and get lined up now. And then, Miss Pam, we're going to take it in. And I'm going to show you up and down Duval Street like you have never seen before, Miss Pam. Just, uh, just don't tell Allie.
Okay, we are on short final and everything is looking good. I'm just watching our vertical speed to make sure that we're stable about negative uh, 400 feet per minute. I do see some areas where it's got some really high level orthophoto but no 3D buildings as of yet. But like I said, if you've got the time and the energy to devote to something like this, you can pull something like this off, which is exactly the point. Okay, Miss Pam, I've got the aircraft, and let's shallow her up here. Okay, this should do it. Nice. That's about as smooth as I'm going to get it here. Of course, we're not quite on center line, but then, to be honest with you folks, I am never on center line. I'm a helicopter pilot, so yeah, we don't need no stinking center lines. But there you go. Clean it up a little bit, and welcome to Key West. Alright, this is our turn, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the brakes here. Now you may notice a Boeing 737 down there and probably think, eh, it seems a little bit out of place. No, that would be incorrect. This airport can actually handle Boeing 737s. However, bear in mind, when you're coming in with a 737, you're going to be using everything at your disposal to stop in time because the runway is still relatively short. I'm not so sure about the FedEx over there, but I've definitely seen 737s come in here. So you could even use that if you download the scenery and, you know, want to fly a 737 in here. And let me tell you, folks, that is a challenge right there. And that's about everything I brought today for show and tell, folks. So I'm going to go ahead and shut everything down and we'll call this episode done. I will remind you that this scenery is basically designed to give you, the viewer and user of Airfly FS2, the inspiration to create your own scenery with the free SDK that they have. Miss Pam, thank you as always for joining me. It's always a pleasure to have you in the cockpit next to me. And folks, that'll do it for me. So as always, this has been Bell Geode. I have been flying in Aerofly FS2 and I have been showing off an independent scenery designed by forum moderator Dr. Hot Wing One. In order to access this, you got to sign up on the forums and download it. If you enjoy what you've seen, please feel free to give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will catch you on the next one. And by the way, folks, thank you so much for your support all year long in helping me reach 3,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. I want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and I will catch you next year. Ciao!